Well, hello everybody and welcome back. We've got some work to do on the camper today. It is extremely windy. I'm hiding behind my shed to do this work because, you know, I'm a poor person and I don't have a shop and I don't have a two post lift that I probably need for this and things like that. So I got my tools. We've got some springs here. We've got some shocks here and we need to put them on the camper. Camper is running stock Z71 spring, stock shocks, whatever was on it when I bought this thing when it was wrecked. And I need to get it up to about the height. I want to match the height of the Suburban with it. The Suburban's running an inch and a half spacer um, and factory springs. So these springs are H2 Hummer coil conversion. So the H2 Hummers have airbag suspension and you can replace the airbags with these springs. And from what I've been told, it is a heavy duty equivalent to what the Suburbans run, just more along the lines of three quarter ton type stiffness. So this is, I'll do a comparison on this later, but this is a Moog HD coil that I bought. And this ugh, significantly heavier is the H2 spring conversion. I'll, I'll get those up in a minute. I'm gonna pull out the Z71 springs and compare all three so you can see the difference. And if this works, it should raise the, sub, the camper close to what the Suburban is. I don't know if it's gonna quite get it all the way there. If not, I may have to add some spacers to get it where I want it. And if it works, I'm also gonna do this on the Suburban later. But for right now, I've got to lift the Suburban, the camper, so I can drop the axle down, pop the springs and shocks out and replace them. So not having, not having a shop or a nice lift or anything, we're gonna do this the redneck, redneck way with a tractor if it works. I might die in this video, it's very possible. This is um, not safe, not recommended, but I'm gonna do it anyway because that's the only way I have to do this really. This, I mean, there, there's no other way for me to do this in my yard, but I'm also gonna get blown away because it is super, super windy. Anyway, let's get started. This is gonna be fun and interesting. had to get a little creative with the tractor's leverage. Turns out one of these tractors will not pick up the back end of a Suburban camper. Probably not the back end of a Suburban either. They're pretty heavy, but I just barely, this wheel is free. So I'm gonna unbolt the shocks and the sway bar and then see if we've got enough to get the springs up. Should be pretty close, but it is relatively simple. This is completely on the ground. It's very sturdy. This is, there's no way this is gonna slide off here. So unless a hydraulic line or something breaks, this isn't coming down. And even if it did, it wouldn't crush me. The axle's not coming out. So this is safe, very safe. Wouldn't recommend it, but it is relatively safe. So we get under here, pull these springs out, pull the shocks out, see if we can get them swapped.
All right, I finally got it up high enough, just barely, and got enough stuff disconnected that I was able to pull the spring out. So here's the springs. This is a factory Z71 spring. This is a Moog HD coil for these Suburbans. And this is the H2 spring. So you can see these are actually a little bit more compressed, I think, than the ones that are on our other Suburban. Maybe they're just more worn, I don't know. But I didn't put these on the other Suburban because they were so close to these, but I can obviously see there's a difference here. So um, I don't know, this is an 05 and our other Suburban is an 01. So there may be some differences in the springs there, but you can clearly see this boy is significantly taller and heftier than the factory spring. So, see if we can get these big boys put in here before I drop this thing. So I don't have quite enough to get the spring in on this side. So I'm adding a high lift, jack, high lift jack on this corner just to give me a little bit more. We're not on level ground here. So just to add another level of safety, throwing in a high lift jack always makes everything safer. All right. Probably getting pretty close now. dangerous part is over springs are in actually looking pretty compressed i'm a little bit surprised but time to get some more of this stuff bolted back up and we're gonna change out the shocks to some slightly longer ones from bilstein and uh yeah should uh hopefully this will take it'll lift it a little bit and it'll make it a little bit firmer suspension so we'll get a little bit less body roll type stuff on it um it's not an issue but i am trying to alter the suspension a little bit it works really good off-road sometimes on road it's a little bit soft so trying to take some of that out of it but get the rest of this bolted back up and we'll see where she sits is all done everything is on new shocks everything is reconnected underneath there it is sitting i'm going to estimate about two inches higher than it was currently i think it'll settle a little bit once it run it down the road so i'm going to say about an inch and a half higher than the stock z71s but we'll see kind of where it where it sits once we run it a little bit but that is done, I'm glad to have that done. We'll see how it works. I can always add airbags inside those springs as well if I need to. I'm not going to right now, I don't think I need them, but I might do it later. I might do something different with airbags since this is a trailer. It's coil springs like this on a trailer is very different and it makes for more body roll. On trails, the softer suspension is really good. It works really, really well to keep the whole trailer from just bouncing and jarring and the anti-sway bar also is really nice it works really good off-road on-road there's a little bit more body roll 
it's never been an issue. It's always been really stable, but it looks a little funny sometimes. And I had to, I keep an eye on it just cause it's different than most trailers you pull, but it's never caused any kind of fish tailing or anything weird so far. The tongue weight makes it super stable. People say it's got too much tongue weight. It doesn't. It's, it's super, super stable because of the tongue weight. If it didn't have a good amount of tongue weight, it wouldn't be stable and I wouldn't like pulling it. So. All right, what are we gonna do next? That is the question. We're gonna work on the brakes a little bit now. So I got it jacked up and there's a little bit of resistance on those, but I've noticed the last couple of trips, this driver's side, the brake has been getting really hot. Not all the time, but sometimes it'll get hot. So I think something is dragging. And right now it's actually, I can barely turn the wheel and the brakes are not being activated. The brakes work really good. They will lock these tires completely up. And it's using the factory brakes on the factory suburban axle. And I've got a electric to hydraulic brake actuator right there. Sorry, it's really windy. That's a Dexter electric to hydraulic brake actuator that I installed a while back. So I don't know what's causing that one to seize. May just be a caliper going out. I don't know but I'm gonna kinda of take it apart. I'm gonna check on my fluids, bleed both of these, and see if that might solve our problem. All right, we're not gonna do anything too fancy on this. I got something to catch the brake fluid. Little valves right there. I'm gonna have Caleb press the brakes in the vehicle, and we'll just alternate, and I'll tighten and loosen until we get this uh, cleared out a little bit. All right, it's the next day. I did figure it out what the problem was here yesterday. This right here, it's kind of a two part system. This is one piece and then this is the rest of the caliper. So there's supposed to be a bolt right here that bolts this together and it is missing. So this part of the caliper can just move around. I don't know how that bolt fell out. They're actually like captive in there, but somehow that bolt is gone. So I ran in to town where my part suburban is and I just pulled a whole nother caliper off. I've got another one of these a 2005 that's wrecked that I just pull parts off of. So I'm gonna steal the bolts off of it and make sure it all works, but I've got the whole caliper. If I need to just replace the whole caliper, I can do that too. But I'm gonna see if I can get this bolt swapped out and see if that takes care of our problem. That is how that works, that screws into there. So this piece is still on. This is the bolt that I need. All right, that's all bolted back on there. I'm gonna put the wheel on, kind of see how the brakes act and if it spins properly or not now. Well, that seems to have fixed the problem. That wheel is spinning freely like the other one now. Um, there's a little bit of resistance, but that's pretty normal for disc brakes. Just, you can tell they're there. But uh, yeah, I think that's got the problem fixed. We'll see on our next trip. It didn't ever lock up or anything. I could just tell that there was some um, resistance there. Sometimes braking, it wouldn't release all the way. And I could tell it was getting hot uh, on steep hills and stuff. So. It's definitely catching some, but that should have the issue fixed now. So I'm gonna run it down the road and double check, make sure it all seems to be working right. And we might have that problem fixed. All right, I gotta hide from the wind. The, I've got an issue with the brakes right now. They're not activating. I think I've got a pinched wire in the back from when I, when I picked this up with the tractor, my wiring harness wasn't really up out of the way and I, pinched it right here which I've been needing to redo this this has been broke for a while I need to rework this part of it so I'm going to rework that and get it all tucked up proper which I never did when I originally did it but it's been fine but I'm going to rework that and I'm also going to put new receivers on both of these so I've got a receiver for the Suburban and a receiver for the camper and these are just going to replace these are going to replace the factory ones it's a heavier duty one 
it's newer and it'll raise my hitch point about two or three inches to give me a little better departure angle. The factory ones are just not that good. The, they hang down really low and they're not as heavy duty as these. So we get them swapped out. I've got this one on and you can see the difference here how this one is tucked right up against the bumper and this factory one which you can run another ball on your bumper with the factory one you can't do it with this other one but I have used this one a few times but I don't need it I always carry a spare one of these in case for some reason I broke one on the trail I always carry a spare one so we're gonna swap this one out and it'll bring this up eventually when I build my custom bumpers I'm gonna raise my receiver all the way up here somewhere so it's I may cut these up and rework them I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it yet but I'm gonna bring my receiver all the way up where it'll be flush with the bottom of the frame eventually when we build those custom bumpers for both of those or buy some I don't know which probably gonna have to build them but that's another task for another day couple of these bolts are giving me a really hard time they're all rusted and seized up and I can't get them off so we have to hit it with the grinder a little bit see if I can grind the head of that bolt off on two of these so we can get this thing off of here it being a pain Ah, that took a while, but it's off. If I had a cutting wheel, that probably would have helped, but I didn't, and I got it, so that's all right. Get this thing off, see if we can get the new one on. I got this one on here. I couldn't get these bolts to line up. I think this bumper is slightly bent. It's been hit a couple times, so it's a little bit off. It's gonna be replaced anyway. Don't really need those. It's all bolted to the frame here as it should be. And this is our weight ratings. 10,000 pound trailer, 1,000 pounds of tongue weight. And the vehicle is also rated for that with the appropriate hitch, which I believe the other one, the factory one is too, but they're known for being a little bit weak. And I didn't like how they hung down, so. We've upgraded and this is plenty stout. I was actually hoping that I would be able to invert this whole thing and fit this between the frame rails and bring it up, but it doesn't look like it quite fits. It is just a hair off, but eventually I'm probably gonna cut this thing apart, alter it, re-weld it, and basically flip these brackets 
upside down so they fit up inside the frame rail and then this will actually ra raise up and be right about here will be where my this hitch is mounted but that will be when we build a bumper we'll cut some stuff re-weld it flip that up and it's gonna be really nice then so this will work for now all right time to tackle some wiring so I need to redo this splice. It got a little tore up and it was hastily done to begin with. I've got some proper, some better connectors now. I've got some heat shrink um, butt splices. So this is gonna work better than what I had on there. It'll seal everything up better. And I also need to redo the trailer plug. And so I've got one of these that I'm gonna put on here and I'm gonna drill a hole and put it up here in the bumper. That way it's not hanging down to get broken off like the last one was. That's what I've done on my truck, on the Suburban. It's a much better location for these. So I'm gonna drill a hole in there, get that mounted, and then redo some wiring. I'll make this short, because wiring is boring. I hate wiring, and I do it for a living. I do low voltage stuff, but I hate vehicle wiring. I hate wiring harnesses. I hate doing it. It's just not any fun, but it's gotta be done. So I'll try to do it right this time and try to get everything working. The sun has gone down and it's getting too dark for me to see and I gotta go get the kids in bed so I'm gonna call it a night we'll get back to wiring tomorrow I'm sitting here editing this video and I realized I didn't ever close out the video but I did get the wiring finished the brakes are back working as they're supposed to and we're gearing up probably to go on another trip i don't know if we're filming this one sometimes we do trips with family and friends or just with by ourselves and we don't film it. it's just for us we don't film everything we do um, but we'll have some more stuff coming soon we've got a lot more to do on the camper if we can ever get the funds to do it but anyway thanks for watching we'll see you next time